These videos are great fun, and I do read over most of the comments you make. Sometimes the comments give me ideas for future videos, and that's why I decided to make this one. Some viewers claim that photons do not actually experience time, and that's a complex topic with some interesting features. Let's take a look. It's a well-known feature that in Einstein's theory of relativity, different observers will experience time differently. Specifically, it's often claimed that an observer moving quickly will experience time more slowly than one that is stationary. This phenomenon is called time dilation. Now, there are a lot of subtleties and misconceptions in such claims. To help dispel those claims, I made a video on how time dilation is often misrepresented. And I also made not one, but two videos about the twin paradox, which deal with a seeming paradox of relativity, which seems to make contradictory claims. It turns out that this isn't really a paradox, but I'm not going to get into those here. I mention these videos because there's a ton of confusion about these topics. If you're interested, I strongly recommend watching them, and I put links to them in the description below. However, what I want to talk about here is whether a photon experiences time. If it's true that a moving clock ticks more slowly than a stationary one, and a photon moves at the speed of light, is it possible that the photon is moving so fast that no time is experienced? To get a handle on that, we first need to understand two important concepts. The first is that in special relativity, there's a mathematical term that pops up all of the time. This term is called gamma. In this video, I don't want to get into exactly what gamma is and how it arises. I made an entire video on that, and I put a link for that also in the description below. Basically, gamma is what makes all of the weird bits of relativity happen. It is written as gamma equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus the velocity of the object squared divided by the speed of light, also squared. That's what it is. Like I said, it's not super important to understand where the gamma comes from. Just know that if there's a relativistic equation, that gamma is going to be in there somewhere. So, let's see how gamma comes into play when we consider what goes on with a photon. If you're standing somewhere, perhaps waiting for the bus, and you see a photon go flying by at the speed of light, what happens with gamma? Well, we can put in for velocity, uh, the velocity of the photon, which is the speed of light, which we always write as c we can see that we get c over c, which is equal to 1. And with that, we see that the gamma reduces to 1 over 0, which is undefined. So that's the key point number one. The equations of relativity don't work for objects traveling at the speed of light. That means that relativity theory also fails for photons. On the other hand, we can borrow an idea from calculus, which is called limits. While we can't use the relativity equations for objects moving at exactly the speed of light, we can evaluate them for objects moving at 98% the speed of light, 99% of the speed of light, 99.99 the speed of light, and so on. In principle, we could do the calculation at speeds that are 99. many, many, many nine times the speed of light. By doing this approach, you can see what happens as you get closer and closer to the speed of light, and use that to figure out what happens when you finally hit the speed of light, if you could, which of course you can. So let's do that and ask how long a super fast object will think it takes to get from Earth to the nearest star. The nearest star is about four light years away, so a person on Earth will say it takes four years to get there. How much time will a person traveling at 90% the speed of light take? Roughly a year and nine months. How about at 99% the speed of light? A little over half a year. 99.9% .9 the speed of light? About two months. We can continue this trend at the staggeringly fast speed of 99.9 .9 more nines the speed of light. It will take a bit shy of 10 minutes. From this, we can conclude that in the limit of going at the speed of light, that a photon will experience zero time. So that's pretty wild. Taken to an extreme, this means that a photon can cross the entire universe in zero time. And it gets weirder. 
Not only does relativity predict that times will shrink, but it also predicts distances will too. Indeed, I made an entire video on this subject, which is called length contraction. And as usual, the link is in the description. A fast-moving object will shrink distances in the direction of motion, although not side to side. If we made a cylinder that stretched from here to the next star, we'd see it as four light years long, while the photon would see it as a circle with no thickness. Again, taken to the extreme, a photon views the distance traveled as it crosses the universe as having no thickness at all. In a sense, as far as the photon is concerned, it's everywhere along its path at once. Now we have to be careful since the equations of relativity don't apply for traveling at the speed of light, but hopefully you see that this limit trick allows us to get arbitrarily close. So I think we can say that a photon experiences no time as it passes from place to place as it travels through the cosmos. Furthermore, it experiences all locations along its path at the same time. Photons are ageless. This photon thing is pretty wild, but that's relativity for you. If you enjoyed getting your mind blown, please like and subscribe and share on social media. You've got to blow other people's minds too. It's the kind of thing we expect from physics because, as you must know by now, Physics is everything.